If you want to ask any question, you are most welcome. Master, in spiritual discourses, you have written, we have to live in this world as a part of our duty and work selflessly with implicit love, unfaltering devotion, and implicit faith for the attainment of Nam. My question is, does this mean that we can maintain an attitude of spirituality throughout all of our daily activities and responsibilities? Or is it more realistic to, on the one hand, um, do our daily activities and, and business and responsibilities And on the other hand, do our spiritual uh, uh, activities separately? Sorry, just repeat your question again. Sorry. The, yes, oh, I'm sorry. The, my question is: Is it possible? Does the does this statement in spiritual discourses mean that we can maintain an attitude of spirituality throughout our daily activities and responsibilities, or is it more realistic to give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to the Lord what is the Lord's separately? What is the difference in uh, your question and uh, the statement which is mentioned in the book? I'm uh, maybe nothing. I, I wasn't sure if the, if the interpretation of this sentence in the book means that we can maintain an attitude of spirituality throughout everything we do in our lives, including our work and, and our other responsibilities. You see, Meditation should reflect in our all activities of life. Meditation doesn't mean closing ourselves in a room for a couple of hours and forget about it. Its effect should be in our daily dealings with people, as a son, as a citizen, as a brother, as a husband, as a wife, as a friend. It should reflect in our daily activities the role which we have been assigned to play in life. It must re reflect in that role. That is the purpose of meditation. Thank you, Master. <clears throat> yes, brother. I have two questions. We are told not to share our uh, inner experiences with anybody. But um, when a non-English speaking brother um, needs an explanation of the Master about uh, his um, inner experiences, in, he cannot write, he cannot write it, so what can he do? You mean to say that person who cannot write? Yes. What they should do? Yes, to ask Master about their uh, inner experiences. They can ask some sasangi to write on their behalf. Okay. Even if uh, it, it is about our uh, experiences? They know how. Okay. The question is, we should not blow trumpets of those experiences. The danger of getting ego being, by being, you see, affected by ego and losing all what we have. In matter of necessity, you can take the help of somebody to write the letter in the language which can reach us. Okay. In in these meetings, are we allowed to? Um, to expose our inner experiences while asking the Master about them. Well, what is the necessity of exposing the experiences? When we have some problem about them. Hmm? When we have some problem... You can write to me. Okay. Hmm? <coughs> Thank you. Yes, please. Uh, for those of us that have never been to Dara, uh, could you talk about the Dara a little bit, please, or the hospital? What would you like me to tell about the Dera and the hospital? I'll be pleased to tell you. 
DERA is expanding. We are trying to build as much as we can because at least the basic facilities to the Sangat we are supposed to provide. The basic needs of the people is shelter, food, accommodation and place to sit for satsang. They are the basic needs. So longer we are have expanded, still we are thinking of expanding it still more because lots of Sangat is coming now. And for accommodation we have already built three very big sheds. We are planning to build the fourth one now. And besides that, a lot of buildings are under construction. And uh, Many hostels also are under construction for visiting satsangis from abroad and for uh, giving them food, tea. We have have very huge cafeterias, bojan bandars, even the snack bars. And uh, for Satsang Maidan, we don't know where to shift because the present Maidan is not now sufficient to hold the Sangha. But they have provided many hundred TVs. So it's not essential that people must sit in that main Satsang grounds. They can sing, sit anywhere in the Dera and they are providing TVs even there in uh, small lawns and places, scattered places, so that people can hear the voice, people can see the dice through the TV. And uh, with a problem of transport, which we are tackling, people bringing from the railway station, these are the necessity, necessary problems we have to tackle for the masses. They are the minimum possible necessities which people know, people need. And management is quite conscious of all that. By His grace there is no shortage of funds, no shortage of cereals, no shortage of cooking materials, no shortage of utensils to serve them, and no shortage of muscle men to help them, sevadars, there is no shortage of anybody, nothing. And people are very happy to serve the coming masses. And uh, we have a big farm for people to spread our to spread ourselves, to expand ourselves. They have cleared the river bed and they have brought the land under the farm about one thousand acres. About four or five hundred acres they have already planted trees and rest is being used for vegetables for the Dera residents. They have all uh, general stores where necessities of life are available, provision stores, people can buy the all sorts of provisions required at home for cooking purposes. Then there is a cloth shop for the residents, it is sold at reasonable rates, no profit, no loss. Even subsidiary is there. There is a vegetable and a fruit shop for the people, you see, to buy vegetables and fruits for their home consumptions. Whatever possible is required in a colony, everything is available by His grace. Milk supply is there, regular one. And uh, I don't know what we are lacking. The children go to school, Bias railway station, they have provided uh, transport to them. Everybody is well looked after. All the sevadars, their families. We have a small hospital within the colony. Their services are always available. If any serious case, it is shifted to the big hospital at Bias. And the people who are managing the Dera, practically they have all their own houses. 
they are all men of self-sufficient means. They are no burden on the dera at all. They give their free service. They serve with love and devotion. They are very dedicated, loyal, noble people, good character people, honest people. What else I can tell you about dera? <laughs> that was a but. Thank you, Rajesh. And what a smile. Hospital report, you will get it after the, the session, you see, hospital an annual report is always sent to the representatives to reach you about the activities of the hospital. But due to the unfortunate situation in, the, in Punjab, we are not getting the right specialists whom we can attract from all over India, what to say up of road. So people are a little frightened to the very word of Punjab. They think probably whole of it is on sitting on volcano. But uh, it is not like that. Incident are there every day. Even yesterday I was reading eight, nine people were killed. The scattered cases are there. But still people are from other provinces are frightened to go to Punjab. So let us hope someday there will be rest. It will be peaceful, whole atmosphere, and we'll be able to attract the most specialization services which we can engage in the hospital. We're not short of funds, by His grace, not short of accommodation. We have sufficient accommodation for the doctors, for the nurses, for the paramedical staff, non-paramedical staff. And, uh, the whatever staff we have, they are all very dedicated and we have not, uh, you see, emphasized that we must have satsangi staff. We said everybody, anybody is welcome who wants to work in the hospital according to the rules and regulations of the hospital. So we have probably three-fourths of the hospital staff is not sasangi, they are non sasangis but they are all vegetarian, strict vegetarian. Nobody is allowed to take any drink or meat or eggs in the premises. The atmosphere of satsang is there, atmosphere of dedication and service is there in the hospital. Everything is given free to them, nothing is charged, even x-ray is free, even cat scanning is free. I don't know much about these uh, sophisticated equipments. All uh, operations are free. And doctors are very happy to perform their duties. So it's going on, it's doing a useful work. Thank you, Maharaji. What is wrong? Yes, please. <clears throat> Radhaswami Maharaji, uh, I have two questions, but first I want to thank you that I was able to come this year. And I am reading a quote from Spiritual Gems uh, regarding four lives. Uh, Great Master writes, your reference to the maximum of four lives is rather amusing. There is absolutely no compulsion to finish your pilgrimage here in the compass of four lives only. Then he goes on to say that uh, the Masters try to um, have er their disciples finish in four lives, but it could be more. And I have never read this anywhere else in the books. It's always been a maximum. <clears throat> Sister Swamiji Maharaj, I'll emphasize on this point that you will not be given more than four lives. Even Christ has indirectly referred to it. When the farmer is taking seed to the field, some seed has fallen on a barren ground, some on the rocky ground, some on the marshal, marshy ground, some on the fertile ground. 
and only the seed which falls on the fertile ground has brought results 75% or so and so. But seed must sprout whatever it has fallen in that very life. Once the seed of Nam is there, it will grow, it will grow to become full-fledged tree. So, so Swamiji has assured that you will not get more than four lives. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't say that you must have four lives. He yeah. said try to finish whatever you have to travel on the path as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. No pleasure to come this world again and again. No. It's a place of misery. Yeah. So try to finish it, finish your journey or try to account for your collected karmas, your store of karmas as soon as possible. And don't sow any new seeds. Mm-hmm. But still he assures us that you will not get more than four lives. I know, Every sir. life will be better than the previous one mm-hmm. from the spiritual point of view. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there wouldn't be any um, break in that, where there would be four lives, but you might have another life in between where you're not a satsangi? No. Yeah. Uh, my second question is in regard to parshad. Uh, is it permissible for me to share the parshad that I will receive with a satsangi that cannot come to India? Well, sister, actually parshad is meant for individual people. Mm -hmm. not something to be shared about. But if you are particularly asked for that, it's all right, there's no problem about it. Okay. What about if a non-disciple would come to my home and I had some on a table and they would just take a piece? How can they take a piece unless you skip them? Uh, Well, you know... When you want to share it... We do that in a, yes, right. In other words, I should put it away if someone is not. Nobody opens your windows and opens your almaras and (coughs) shuts your house, you see, for anything. Right. Unless you offer them. That's right. But I just, uh, I usually just have it out there all the time. That's what you want to offer them, actually. Mm Mm-hmm. But I wondered if it was okay. No, I don't think it is okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Right as well. Maharaji, um, yes, over the last two days you answered two questions on meditation and the proper technique and in one case you said oh, it's very important to follow the correct procedure and it was essential in fact and then in the other question you said that it wasn't so important to follow the technique as the concentration that came from it. I was wondering why you gave these two different answers to the same question. Can you repeat the different answer I've given? Um, yesterday you said to a lady that first you should do Simran followed by visualization and that was very important to do it that way. And the day before that you said to someone that he could visualize your form before he did Simran and it didn't matter that you had to do Simran first. You're sort of quite positive about both answers so I was wondering there because there's no contradiction in these things. There's no hard and fast, first you should see, sit in Simran and then hear the sound, or first you should hear the sound and then do the Simran. It varies with individuals. Uh-huh. Many letters are answered keeping in view their questions before us. And everybody's questions is not the same. You people read the books, they are our answers. You don't have their questions before you. To what question these letters have been answered? Mm. Everybody has individual problems. And the letters tackle with those problems, individual problems. We can generalize these answers. But these answers are actually meant to the person who has written that letter. Because he can only understand when he keeps his own letter before the answer. Yeah, but in this case I thought the questions were both the same. 
it was the same question. There are no contradiction anywhere in Santmat box. It looks to us because all sorts of questions are there with different level of understanding, different level of background people have. From that point of view, letters are addressed to them, answers are given to them. So sometimes they look to us contradictory. If we put their letters also before us, then they are not contradictory at all. Thank you. Master? Hello? Yes, please. Um, I have a great fear of flying on airplanes. What can I do to overcome this fear? Well, sister, I can't say don't go by air. <laughs> you have to overcome this fear, you see. Generally, sometimes such odd fears get hold of us right from the childhood. And then we find it very difficult to get rid of them. So slowly and slowly we should try to analyze your fear and try to get out of it. It started last year, because I've flown since I've been a baby, and it started about a year ago. How it started? I don't know. Very rough flight? Excuse me? Some rough flight? No, but every time we hit an air pocket, I start crying and I get shaky and I keep thinking we're going to die. Well, of course, dying is not very pleasant, but uh, there's nothing unpleasant about it too. <laughs> what is in this world to hang on? I don't know. Don't worry. Leave it to the Father and He knows best. Don't fear anything. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, uh, Master. I have a question about death, which I'm going to have to read to you because otherwise I might forget what I have to say. So, um, <clears throat> is there any way that we can be of constructive support and help to close friends and relatives who are non satsangis who are in the process of dying? People in my country usually have very uh, awkward and uncomfortable feelings around those who are dying and usually don't know what to do or how to be with them. So what I'd like to know is, can you recommend a way perhaps that we can be the most useful and beneficial to those who are about to die? Well, brother, if Satsangi is going to die, unfortunately Satsangis are around him, around the person, it's better to request the non sasangis to go out of the room. And if sasangis can sit there and help him to remind about the Shabbat, or remind the person about the path, it will help him. And if you read anything from Sarbachan, from Santmat books, just to remind him about the Father, about the meditation, about the Shabbat, it definitely helps. But it, At least don't talk about the worldly things before the person. Don't try to draw his attention outside in the worldly affairs. But if it's a non satsangi we're dealing with that's, that's dying, is there something we can do maybe just to remind them of God or...? There's no sense, no, no necessity. There's nothing we can do? Can we you can't do anything meditate at all. in the room with you them? You meditate just for your own self so that you may not feel perturbed unnecessarily. It may not affect you mentally. You may not lose your balance, so that you can face that death, you see, without losing balance. It will help you to stand that death, to accept that death. It is not going to help the other person at all. I see. Thank you, Master. Yes, sister. Master, when uh, after meditation the consciousness does not readily return to the body, then uh, I take that as a signal to continue meditation. Uh, but then, uh, I don't know, should I then uh, 
uh, start all over again with Simran and then do Bhajan or just go on with Bhajan? Sister, normally what we have been explained is that we should first attend to Simran, then to Shabbat. If sometime Shabbat is not very audible or is not pulling and mind is not attracted towards Shabbat, there is no harm in switching on back to Simran. Mm -hmm. Individually has to decide at that time what suits them the best. Yes. Master, <coughs> on your right. Yes. Um, I have a question for somebody else that she asked me to ask you. Um, she's a woman who has trouble with her heart and she's in her 40s. She's under the supervision of a doctor and she says she's been initiated s since six years ago and she's unable to meditate because she gets terrible pain in her body and she cannot sit in meditation. She said sometimes she can manage one day or two days and then she cannot sit anymore. And she wondered what she should do. Well, under the situation, she says she should do whatever is practically possible. Whatever time she can give it, she, she should give it. Okay, thank you. Master? Master? I was, I was wondering if uh, everything that's, that's happening, every moment and everything that's supposed to happen to me in my lifetime, everything that I'll run into, is it supposed to happen? I mean, like, so I don't have to worry about dying. If I die, that's the way it's supposed to happen and not to worry Brother, about it. even if you worry, even then it will happen, whatever has to happen. If, I didn't understand you, sir. Even if you are worrying, that will not stop from happening what has to happen. So, what has to happen will have to happen, whether you worry about it or whether you don't worry about it. Y yes, sir, that's what I want to know, so I don't have to worry about it. I, uh, wish, I wish it has been so easy. Yeah, so I don't, I don't have to worry about whatever is going to happen, Some, going to happen. Sometimes we know this is going to happen, but still we get ourselves so much involved with that problem, go on, start worrying day and night. And yet knowing fully well nothing is in our hand, we can't change it, we have to accept it later on, and then ultimately we have to accept it. Thank you. Yes, please. Master, there's a beautiful hymn by Saint Paltu that I would like to hear you explain. Pardon? There's a beautiful poem or a song by Saint Paltu that I'd like to hear you explain. Would you do that? You want to say something about Paltu? The, you want to read the song? So you could explain it? Well, you read it. Okay. Since you have done in English, so it means you know the meaning. No, I don't think I understand the full meaning. All right, you can read it if you are so anxious to know the meaning. Okay. The Lord and the devotee are one, and the Lord as a devotee does his own devotion. The Lord is the bestower, and the Lord is the beggar, begging from himself. The Lord is the yogi, detaching himself from the pleasures of the world. The Lord is the bogi, throwing himself wholeheartedly into the enjoyment of worldly pleasures. The Lord is the harlot plying her trade, and the Lord her customer. The Lord is the physician, and the Lord is the patient getting himself cured. The Lord is Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. The Lord appears as Sir, Nar, and Muni. The Lord is Brahm engaged in creation, and the Lord is the source of Maya. The Lord is the cause, the Lord the effect, revealing the world to himself. Yet nonetheless, he is aloof and apart. But says Paul to, this can be revealed only through the grace of a saint. You see, this is only by the lovers of the Lord. They find the Lord everywhere in everyone. He says, Lord is in everyone. He is in the Guru. He is in the disciple. He is the creator. He is in the creation. 
and he is everywhere he is in the patient he is in the doctor he is the one who creates he is the one whom he is trying to make worthy of, of judgment he is the one who is judging and he is the one who has to be judged he is everywhere i often say he worships himself through us okay thank you he is to be worshiped and he is the one who makes us worthy of his worships and he is the one who has to be judged he is everywhere he is in everywhere the lover sees none but the lord in this creation he doesn't see anything else at all in this creation bulla has said the same thing he says there is only one thing to talk about the lord which i see all around everywhere what else to talk these books have created confusion this is just acrobats by the intellectuals to confuse people what is there about the lord to talk about to write about he is he is and he is everywhere so this is the certain state when the lovers don't see anything else but the lord he is the creator he is near the creation he is the one who is making worthy in this creation and he is the one who is to be judged and he is the one who makes us worthy of his judgment and he is the one who is to judge us there is nothing besides him in this creation thank you maharaje here yes sister mm-hmm. yes please yes. and to what extent can it help a non satsangi at this time of death that he was close connected to satsangi pardon mm-hmm. once again the whole question yes please you are asking a number of questions ah uh, no it's one question and uh, and to what extent can it help a non satsangi at this time of death that he was close connected to a satsang can there be any beneficial you mean can any non satsang and that's your follow your question uh-huh. um uh and sometimes read that sat guru even cares for the relatives and friends of a satsang well sister some special cases mm-hmm. he i mean he's all powerful there's no restriction on his limits but general law is something different exception is something different well, he can do anything there are no restrictions on his power well, thank you Yes, sister. Master Radhaswami, I'd like you to clarify a couple of a couple of subjects that I've been getting mixed messages about. The first one being tapes. I have some beautiful tapes from representatives from long ago, and I have been told that I have to destroy them, and I get a great deal of pleasure out of listening to these devoted satsangis. I would like to know from you if I must destroy these tapes. Why should you destroy the tapes? They don't bother anybody. Thank you. I appreciate that answer. The other question is <laughs> The other question is I would like to know when we do have many bandaras of a large number if we may invite those representatives from other states to come visit us and give us the beautiful satsangs they well, go into well, the sister, house that is for the representative to decide it is not for me to decide it is for your representative to decide he has to decide whether he is to invite other representatives from other jurisdictions or not it's not for me to interfere in these things 
Thank you, Master. Uh, Father, I'm often very unsteady because when I'm in India, I see a lot of vigor and I'm not sure if it is in your will that I give some food to them. Then, then if I don't do that, I remorse and I have a very bad feeling. I request you for your permission because in Germany I help the beggars too. You mean you see a lot of beggars? Yes. Then what do you want to do with them? Yes, may I? Hmm? May I do that? May I what? May I help the beggars? How many beggars you can help, sister? No. Hmm? I'm, tr I'm trying to help them. The sister, there are two aspects of a thing. Whether you will be encouraging beggary or whether you are helping the beggars. There are two sides of the coin. Whether you are helping them or whether you are encouraging them to beg. Whether your money is rightly used or whether it is used for drugs or drinks or vices. If you can give to some institution who looks after the beggars, it may go for the right cause, the right welfare of the beggars. If you start distributing it to the beggars direct, I don't know whether it will be rightly used or wrongly used. You have to make up your own mind. I will follow your instruction, Raza Swamiji. Yes, please. For the benefit of those seekers that may hear this tape, and for the benefit of us who find it hard to put into words the phenomena of seeing the Master, would you be so kind as to give a small gist on who we have come to see, on who the Master really is? Well, our real Master is Shabbat, that Holy Ghost, that Spirit, that Logos, our Word, which is within every one of us. That is our real Master, that creative power which has created the creation. And that is our real Master. Unless we find someone where the world has taken its abode and he connects, that, connects our soul with that world, we cannot be brought in touch with that world within. So we respect those people who fills us with love and devotion for that holy word. That is why we need the necessity to go to a mystic or a saint. You see, our main object is to go back and merge back into the Father. Our relationship of the soul with the Father is that of love and devotion. This relationship is not based on any religion or any color or creed or any caste. It is based on pure love. Soul is the drop of that ocean. Only on the strength of our love and devotion we can go back to Father. But we can only love whom we have seen, whom we have met, with whom we have mixed. How can we love the Father whom we have never seen? About Him only we have heard. We love our children, we have given birth to them. We love our parents, they have brought us into this creation. We love our brothers and sisters, we have a common blood running into their veins. We love our wife, friends, we have mental association, emotional association with them for the last so many years. We love our country, 
who love our religion, who have been brought on them, our mind has been conditioned right from the birth about these things. But how can we, but these loves, they are all perishable. They cannot last for long. Even our body leaves us. Even this doesn't belong to us. It is only for a short period. So, only our love for the Father can stay or remain. But we cannot love Him because we have not seen Him. So we try to seek the company of the mystics or saints who fills us with love and devotion for the Father, who puts us on the path which leads back us to the Father, who leads us back to the Father, who gives us strength and support to drag us towards the Father. So we love Him. Ultimately, He and we become one with the Father. That is why we seek the company of those mystics, because we have seen them, we know them, and their love is transformed into the love of the Father. That is why Christ said, if you love your father and mother more than me, that you are not worthy of me. Unless you become worthy of me, you cannot become worthy of the Father, worthy to become me. Unless you become me, you cannot become the Father. So we have to become the worthy of the Master, and then we become the worthy of the Father. So it is a strong channel between us and the Father, strong means which pulls us back to the level of the Father. So either we don't need a Master at all, we can worship the Lord straight, and if we cannot, worship the Father straight, we have not seen Him. So we need a mystic or a saint who is at our level, like us, who can influence us with His love and His devotion, who can lead us on the path which leads back, back to us, to the Father. So we need the living mystics, living saints, because the old mystics, old saints, they were great, they have become one with the Father. For us, they have become as unapproachable as the Lord Himself. They are at the same level as the Lord is. So why not worship the Lord now direct instead of worshipping through them who are as far away as the Father Himself? So if we need a Master, we need Him at our level. Otherwise, we don't need a Master at all. So we need the company of the mystics, so that we are filled with love and devotion of the Father, who can lead us back to the level of the Father. They come from the Father, being here they are one with the Father, and they take us back to the Father. All sheep belong to the Father, they just come as shepherd. All souls are marked by the Father, they come and whistle, they are all mark the lottery soul, automatically collect around them. They don't have to go to search for them. The marking is done at a different level. They automatically, with one excuse or another, flock around them. And he recognizes his own sheep. Could you say something about how the Master recognizes his own sheep? Because the marking is done by the Father, and he knows the marking done by the Father, only those sheep will come to him who has been marked for him. No other sheep will come else, no other sheep will, no any other sheep will come to him at all. The sheep may not be living right under his nose, he will never bring any faith in him. He will never come to him. He will never take him as the master. Only the marked one will come, maybe living in thousand and thousand miles away from him. So he does recognize his own sheep. Christ said, I speak in parables, 
बिकॉज एवरी बॉडी इज नॉट मैं टू अंडरस्टैंड स्टैंड दैम ओनली दोज आर मैं टू अंडरस्टैंड दैम ओनली दे विल अंडरस्टैंड अदर्स विल नॉट स्टैंड टीचिंग इज नॉट फॉर एवरी बॉडी टीचिंग आर ओनली मैं फॉर दोज हु आर मार्क टू अंडरस्टैंड हु आर अलॉटेड बाई द फादर टू अंडरस्टैंड अदर्स विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द टीचिंग जीवन Thank you. Yes, please. Maharaji, <clears throat> last week in Delhi, a seeker asked you about meditation and sitting in meditation if it was all right to say repeat Radha Swami Radha Swami and over and over again. And I was wondering is that just a personal advice for that person or is that advice in general for all seekers? Well, brother normally generally i never advise any seeker to repeat the word radha swami without understanding the teaching without fully being convinced about the teaching without they are making the mind that they have got to follow this teaching then sometime they become so used to that repetition that they it become difficult for them to get rid of that practice and turn to the right simran but people are seekers are so anxious to do something so they do it many time they are told to well if you can't help it then do it but it's better to wait till they really understand the teaching till they are really they have made up their mind to follow the teaching they live the teaching they have decided to change their pattern of life there no harm in waiting thank you yes I had originally wanted to ask a question about the third vow but I've been told that you're tired of those questions. Pardon? I originally had wanted to ask a question about the third vow. About morality? Yes, but I've been told that I have another question because I've been told I just got here and I've been told that those that questions have been asked. So my question is one of my favorite tapes is from 1979 when a sister asked you about depression and you answered it quite well. And you ended it by saying sister we're just dancing to the tune of our karmas. Hmm? You answered it by saying sister you are we are just dancing to the tune of our karmas we're just dancing He's pulling the strings and we're puppets and we're just dancing to the tune of our karmas And my question is sometimes I wish you'd snip the strings and sometimes I wish you just dim the lights This is the same question which the other gentleman asked the other side that uh, should we worry if everything has to happen which has happened you see everybody has a lotted part to play in this life everybody is born with a certain destiny which he has to go through so you can say we are dancing to the tunes of our karma or we have allotted karmas to go through allotted destiny to go through allotted events of life we have work for but we cannot change our destiny at all we have to go through our destiny 
But meditation helps us to strengthen our mind, to go through it smilingly, at least without losing much balance. We cannot change the events of our life, but we can adjust to those events of life so that we may not be unnecessarily perturbed. There is a cycle of weather. Summer has to come, winter has to come. You can't change the cycle of weather. But if you will prepare for the weather, winter has to come, winter is coming, you are prepared, you have woolen clothes, overcoats and all other heaters and all other arrangements to meet the winter, winter will pass. Similarly, summer is coming, fast approaching. If you have prepared yourself for the summer, and all necessities to help you in the summer, you have got it, summer will go. You can't change the cycle of summer and winter, but you have adjusted yourself to the cycle of winter and summer, so they pass. Similarly, we have ups and downs of our life. Events of life we have to pass through, they will not change. So we have to go on adjusting to those events of life if we want to live happily in this creation. You cannot swim against the waves, you have to swim along with the waves. So we have to adjust, we have to accept what comes. If we don't accept it, we are the one to suffer. But events won't change. If some death has, death has taken place in the family, sooner the better we accept it, the gentleman has died, he has left me, and I have to adjust my life without him. If we refuse to accept that he has died, and don't adjust at all without him, we are the one to suffer. He is not going to come back in life again. So suffering will be to my credit because I refuse to adjust. He is not going to come back. So we must adjust to the events of our life. We must go through our destiny. Because even if the Lord or the Father or anybody else helps us, you see, our life is interconnected with so many other people. This chain cannot be broken. Our all relationship with each other are interconnected. It is not an independent life we are living in this creation. We are all relationship is interconnected. If son is there, mother is there, father is there, brother is there, school is there, educational institutions are there, doctor is there, nurse is there, neighbors are there. Young boy, boy, his playmates are there. So they are all connected with his birth. If one man's destiny is to be changed, so many people, so many chains have to be broken. So saints never do it. They go along with the will of the Father. <coughs> 